those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. Hiya, right then. A warning now for people who ain't got the patience, this is going to be a bit of a long video. More like a tutorial video, I suppose, in a way, I suppose, I don't know, in a way I'm rubbing. So anyway, the idea of this video is just like to uh, show you the little tricks that I use to get the uh, fuselage looking like the real plane. Because obviously with the kit you don't get half the, the, the bits to make it detailed. So it's detailing the fuselage, I suppose, in a way. So anyway, we'll start from the back and we'll work forward, I think, and turn it around and that. So bear with us, so let's go to the tail plane. Okay, as you can see, I've put the lettering on. Obviously, these decals won't come with the uh, the um, kit. You have to make them yourself. So basically, it's a, a lot of this I might add is you, you've got to keep looking at the picture, get as many pictures of the real plane as possible, right? Either online or go to the Shuttleworth collection and do it there, right? Which would help because they do tend to um, change things. So as I found, as I'll come to, right? Anyway, so the lettering, right? The lettering is basically you look at the picture, sort of like give it a judge it by the picture and then use your eyes to sort of get it right and so the lettering that the, the lettering is made out of solar this is solar phallum okay which sticks quite nice to solar text or this is actually aura text and i might add it the aura text has got a plus now because the aura text has got a better adhesive than the solar text it doesn't in other words the letters don't peel off <coughs> which i find quite relaxing after a while and so there you go so they're done and the way i did them is i just looked at letters and i use a, a measuring rule and guide what the, that like that'll be 15 millimeters that way uh, all rounds 15 mil for that one and this one yeah and you just have to keep looking and then you you basically i'll come to that now what i tend to do is as i make templates out of uh, scrap bolsa because when it's on black you can't mark it to see it so then you put it down and you just right I'll, I'll, you, you go around it with a scalpel so as you know, so I've marked this scalpel here with a tape, as I, ca I call this my cutting scalpel for fine, for, you know, for like doing the fulham and stuff like that, because it needs to be razor sharp, and you basically just go around it on the fulham. I pin it down on into the fulham, and that, and then cut around it, you know, just take your time, and that, and obviously the various sizes, because that's the size for that one, you know what I mean, and that's the size for that one. And I might add, that's what you do with the wings as well, but obviously they'll be bigger, that's and you just keep these because they're coming handy, you never know. I've got loads of them, but they never seem to be the right size. So that explains the letters. Okay, this little bit of writing here, this is just permanent marker because it was on the plane, you know, as I noticed it on the picture. So um, I just put them on, you know, with permanent marker so it looks like it. It actually looks like the real thing, so that's handy. So that'll do that, right? And I'll just write it. So I'll turn it over. Turn the plane over now. So we come to this piece. Right. These here, these don't come with a kit. In fact, there's nothing on the plane to say they exist, but they do. Right, the strengthening struts at the back, right, or spars, whatever you want to call them for the tail plane. Right, so what I made them out of was, so we'll come to now, is uh, barbecue screw sticks. You know, cost a fraction of the price, even for me, you know? And uh, I think they cost about £1.50, the hundreds of them. And I basically use these because they're about the, looking at the picture again and look about the right width. Okay, so you use them, cut them down to size, right, which is nothing to do. And then the clips, these pieces here, I just you get these like electrical bits. I got these from Stairmats in Wales, but you can get many any old electrical wholesaler are doing. You know, and you find these little hook things, and you strip off the plastic, pull them off with a pair of pliers, and that uh, open it up a little bit with a screwdriver. You know, so you can get the rod on, and you can crimp it on there and there. <coughs> Add a bit of cyano or a bit of uh, epoxy resin if you need to, okay. And then you basically spray them up like you've done, screw them in. Bob's your uncle, okay. And uh, so that'll be that. Okay, that's that bit done. So we'll keep going. So that's the back of the fuse. If I'm going too fast. I apologise. So right, we're moving up the fuse this side now. Bear in mind, look at the picture. Right, these little windscreens, they came with a kit. The actual plastic came with a kit, okay? But this piece here, this piece of silver, I'm running my finger over, that doesn't, right? Now, a friend of mine, a long time ago, sent me this material, which is this, if you put the camera on this. This is like, 
It's really, this has got to be the most cluedest stuff I've ever come across. Right, it's like tin, yeah, and it's adhesive tin, yeah. And I usually use this to make the metal effect on. If we pan up here, uh, I've got my light here on the pup. It gives you the metal effect, it's dead easy and it sticks and it's fantastic. All right, so come back down. So what I've done with this is I'll show you where the windscreen on the picture, it shows you it's got some metal strip. So I just cut a nice thin piece with a pair of scissors and then uh, I run my, thing, my thumb and thumbnail around to get that little groove here, you know, because it's self-adhesive. See the groove? You just run your finger around it or, or get, a, get a nice pointy thing like a stick or something. Uh, and I did that. So that's how I got that effect on the windscreen. And like I said, it's self-adhesive. These are epoxy then. Right, and you cut the angles. I showed you that in the last video. Okay, so that's them. And you see this little piece here? I'll use the scalpel. Excuse me. Right, so this little piece here again is the same material. You, know, you just got to take your time and cut out with a scalpel or, or a pair of scissors. And these little dots here to mark out the pins, the bolts are just again permanent marker. Okay, so that's how I did them. And then you come to this piece here on my finger is this right with the kit they give you I can't find it now. The tube they give you in the kit is not adequate enough. It's too it's too thin, it's too small in fact it's it's like it's no bigger than normal fuel tubing. So I thought I've got to make it look a bit more realistic. So what I did there was I mean this here, sir. here we have it. Yeah, I just found this is the right thickness. Piece of uh, off cut three core flex. Go down it with a scalpel in the middle, and just strip the wires out like so. And then obviously the coating they use, you just clean it out with your fingers or whatever or a cloth. Okay? Okay. And what I did is I got a big long piece of it and I sprayed it, primed it, and then sprayed it with the, the black, you know, because that's the colour. And then you basically cut it to size, fit it up and make sure it all fits nice, and then epoxy resin it in. You must epoxy it because it's rubber so, or whatever it is. Yeah, and you pin it in and it'll be dry in five minute epoxy. Okay, which is this stuff. See? Alright, it's perfect. All right. Best stuff in the size bread. So that's all in nice. It's all in spread. So that's done. And you, I might add, you do that first before you put the windscreens in. Okay, right, so we'll come out. Now this piece here, my finger's running on. On the picture, I don't know what they are on the plane, I've got a bloody clue. But they're there. They're on it, and I thought I was going to use originally the the, uh, the barbecue screw sticks, but they're not flexible enough to stick to the uh, fuselage. So what I used there was is this stuff here. Okay, I'll get rid of it as we go. This is the inner tube. You know that stuff. I don't. I don't. You have to pardon me. I don't know the proper name. Of it. Oh, I'll show you actually. Look, I found it. Martin Thompson gave me a load of this. This is this is stuff they use. So mate, when you want to do your ailerons and stuff like that, one tube slides in out of the other. And I found that was just the right size, perfect size. So I, I pinched it. I never use this stuff because I'm a bit old fashioned. Uh, I tend to use the old fashioned way sticks in there. Yeah. So I cut it down to size like you do. Uh, you see, you've got a nice size. And uh, I primed it. And I, uh, I, I glued it on before I sprayed the fuse. Again, you use your epoxy resin in it or stick. It's lovely. Both sides. There's one either side, which you'll see in a minute. And that worked a treat. So, you know, it's all like cheap ways of getting out of it. And Mr. Barry Clay, probably watching this, will be laughing his head off because he does this all the time and he's quite clever. Right, it's the best actually. So, there you have that, right? That's how you attain that piece. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, I noticed on one picture, right, on the Shuttleworth, on YouTube, Right, this shows you the plane flying and blah de blah. And I'm like, ah, that's all very good. And then I noticed when I took the pictures, when I went to the collection itself, the museum, on the pictures, there's this little mirror here. Okay, and I thought, ah, oh, bloody, I thought I'd finished it, the fuse, and then I seen that. So, a bit of artistic license, you know, the real one's got a bit of a bracket, but you know, if it's a quarter scale, I could do it, but being it's so small, this is where I did it. So, the take on this is on the front there, there's a piece of tin foil, put it on bit of scrap bolster and then I used one of these locking things that I use I think they use them for ailerons or whatever you know I thought oh that's handy so I uh, drilled a little hole at the back epoxy resin the nut in okay tightened it up used a bit of cyano on it and that to make it solid because obviously when it's flying you don't want it flicking around okay and then I epoxied it into there and this again this tape here 
this is that metal, the self-adhesive metal, and I just cut it in thin strips and wrapped it so it looks a bit authentic. I know it's not like a real one, but that's how it works. Okay, so that's that taken care of. Now, these here, these are on the plane, they're like switches, the flick switches. So what I used there was, these, these are like capping nuts, capping, uh, plastic capping, so when you screw a screw in, you want to make it look pretty, these come, any hardware shop does these, okay? And then it, it, I just, well, this one wouldn't clip, typical, but it clips shut, okay? And then I basically got a bit of scrap bolsa, uh, glued it on the front, okay? Painted it with a, you know, just a piece of uh, acrylic, which I'll come to in a minute, okay? And uh, I drilled the holes and put a bit of this wire, just off cut wire. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you're making your rods up for your radar ones and that, I always keep the off cuts because they're coming only for other things, and that's that, and just chop it and put it in, and that gives you that effect. Yeah. <coughs> like the switches, and once they're all glued in, epoxied in, job done. So, these bits here now, where my finger is, I know it's in the plane, these are like the rods, the strengthening rods, support rods, whatever. You know, now I made these, these are permanently inset, obviously. Two little holes for either side to get the angle. Uh, these rods, again, it's just scrap, just scrap rods, that, you know, like you use for your radar ones, the off cuts. Cut them down, and then a bit of brass, that piece there where my finger is, there's a bit of brass tubing that you use, you know, like simple as that. And you, the brass tubing just slots in like so. And then what you do is, is just crimp it at the end. You don't have to epoxy it because it's never going to move. And you crimp the flat bit in the middle. Okay, a bit of use of Dremel and that to get it around. Drill a hole in the, once it's flattened with the pliers. Just get your pliers and flatten the your pliers, keep the camera on you. The flyer, flatten the bit in the middle, you, you know. And once you've got it flattened, you drill your hole through like I've done there, where my finger is, and job's done painted silver because that's what it is on the plane. So that if that makes sense, so you've got your copper tubing that you get from most hobby shops will do it. You know, any fraction of it. And then I'll do that, and that solves that problem. Okay, so we'll get into it all now. Uh, right, the lettering again, that's the same. You have to point the camera to the, the lettering. The lettering is the same. Again, you look at the picture. This was 10 mil all round, and it's just a case of practice, really, trial and error. You know, because every time I do it, it's that every plane's got a different size, so you just have to go for it. And that was using that sort of um, solar text going onto aura text. All right, oh, that's no, just aura text on the solar text, so that's okay. And that's stuck all right. Okay, 180 degrees. Okay, but just be careful because this has been sprayed. If you get the iron, it'll, it'll go onto the paint. But that's just practice again. Right, these bits here. Right, these are, I've put these in for the rigging. Normally on a real plane, it will go into the wing. But that's just when you're flying this, you want to make it as easy as possible to get the rigging off. So these have gone through the fuse. And what I use there, believe it or not, is this. My friend Tony, bless him, he had these old tin trays alley trays that he used for like making toffee and all this and he don't do it anymore so I pinched them off of him nice and bendable easy to apply get a pair of uh, garden shears or um, pruners you know or, or metal cutters and uh, just cut the strips to width if you want because it's so bendy and that truly holes and, and epoxy resin them in and that when it comes to like putting your uh, putting your rigging wires on you just clip them on you know like you're doing and it's quick and simple I'll show you that later when I get to the wings. So anything like that I'll do. Uh, the last time I used was barbecue. An old barbecue. It was just the same bit of cheap soft tin. Let's see, a soft alley. Perfect. Okay. So these here. See where this finger is now? These are the extra rigging as well. This is quite a pin. Uh, they're cottle. I call them cottle pins. I don't know what their real name is. But that's one of them there. Again, get the screwdriver. Open it up a bit. And widen it. Then you bend it at 40, 90 degrees. Drill a hole through the stick and put it out, because these have been covered with the, the fallum. You epoxy them in, chub them. And then the fillum will hold it as well, so it's extra. But but there's no, there is, these, are not, these are just for show because the real rigging, even if you had the real rigging, it would hold it, but these are just gonna be elastic cord for this. It's not necessary on this model to have proper rigging, you know, so you just put it through there, you know, and just do it all. I'll do that in the next video. Get in there. Right, this piece here, this piece here is a, on the plane, it's a panel, they unbolt. All right, so them little silver bits, this is where the pin comes in. All right, you just get a spray, you know, yeah, top of the spray, 
you just spray it in, right? And then because it's such a fine thing to do, you just tap the pin in, put the fuse on its side, tap it in, and just gently go on it, so you get the uh, you know the desired effect of what's supposed to be bolts, okay? And, and you do, I do that a lot with it. You just spray it in the tin and touch up here and there where you've caught it when you're putting things in, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, that's that bit. We'll get in there. I told you it was a long video. This piece here, right, this is on the picture, the moth, right. Again, them letters, I just literally drew them out and cut them. I know they look a bit rough, but that's the best I could do with a blade. Probably no modern days, you could probably get them printed, but I haven't got that ability. So this is the moth. See this here? Get a bit of card, fold it, draw it out to your eye looking at the picture to get a rough idea. Once you've got it, just put it on your piece of solar phallum, draw around it in the inside. Once you've got the mark, just cut it out with a sharp scalpel and just put it on. And then DH there is just the uh, the permanent marker. Okay, so we've got that next. Oh, yeah, top bit here. All right, this is obviously your filler to fill up the uh, petrol tank. Now, because I, I've run out of the caps, I will get one, but for now, this little piece here I use to block the hole uh, is, believe it or not, them. I don't, I've, I don't usually use these bloody little mini screwdrivers, so I decided to cut that off with a Dremel, sand it to a little, so it rounded it off, and it fitted in the fuel tube, lovely. So that'll do for now. Okay, that sits in there, that's out of the way. This hole here is for the uh, glow plug starter, goes in, starts it, as you need Next thing, <coughs> this here, this is a bit of plastic, just a bit of plastic tubing that uh, I found, you know, so that looks like some sort of port thing there. This again is that same thing here, the front bit here, that's one of these, just a bit of balsa in it, all, all epoxied in and painted to look like the fuel cap filler of the real plane. And my bit I really impressed with is this here, this here is the AA sign, okay, and that again was a piece of this. Oh, I've actually got it here. A piece of that sticky stuff. And I, right, I drew round it with a mark, permanent marker. And, that, and I cut it out with a scalpel. Okay. And then with it, to get the A effect, the A effect, I used a permanent marker. And then I just got a really small a pin. And got, right, and I got the paint, which is this stuff. If we go over here, I use acrylics. This stuff costs about £10 out of WH Smith or something like that, you know, or any stationery shop. The Ryman's, I think I got it from. You know, and they're brilliant. It's fast drying and it's just, you know, it's good fun. So, and that's how I did that. Got the pin and just filled in the gaps, you know, to make it as close as I could. You know, because it's really hard to do that that small. Okay, and uh, so that's this side taken care of. I already explained this in a previous video, a bit of balsa. And unfortunately, that is the real exhaust. Stuff that I could do about that. It just has to be there. Now that's that side. We're nearly there now, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost there. Okay. All right. So if we turn it round, I hit my camera, lady. Right. We're almost there. He says. Okay. So on the video, right? On the video, on the in the pictures, I noticed this piece of tubing. Right. Well, it's a hose. And it goes up into this thing. Whatever that is, I have no idea. But it's on the real plane. So this here is just a bit of doweling and a bit of scrap bolts are all just glued in. And this is a bit of fuel tubing. That's all it is. A bit of rough fuel tubing, such as this. A bit of fuel tubing. Uh, as obviously more you need. I sprayed it to get that effect of it being like a rough old hose, like it is on the real plane. I just basically sprayed it with grey primer. Then I sprayed it before it was dry. I sprayed it with black. And then before that dried, I sprayed it with silver, so you get that motley effect, which works. And again, you know, I use the uh, sticky metal stuff that I was on about to just give you that effect of holding it. Okay, so that's how you do that. And then, oh yeah, and underneath, according to the picture, as you can see, there's these bits of wood. I don't know what they're for, but they're on the plane, so that's just scrap balsa. So that's just super glued on. So I'll be no problem painted first. So that's that and that. Right, and then we come to the exhaust. Okay, oh yeah, this bit here, these are just bits of uh, old wire bent at 90 degrees and epoxied in to look, to make give it the effect of the real plane, which, you know, it's just up to you. The exhaust, right, the exhaust is made so that if you pan the camera around here, you'll see that there's a hole in there because this is permanently fixed. 
Whereas when you, if you ever take the cowling off, at least you, it will all slide up, out frontwards, you know, so you can get that on and off, so you don't have to worry about access to this. Because obviously it's not going to work otherwise. The exhaust now, I'll come to that. So the exhaust, looking at the pick, they just don't come with the kit either. Okay, in fact, there's nothing that comes with the kit with the exhaust at all. None of this, none of this comes with the kit. This is all, you, the only thing you get is the plastic molding. And then obviously it's license, artistic license, do what you want. But I did explain this in the previous video, so I won't go into that. But this rod here, and this is the bit I was saving. Okay, yeah, it's on now because to be honest with you, you get to the stage where you just have enough of it. I looked at the brackets and yeah, you could use that metal that was on about, get the strips that I've done there and put them over the screws to make it look like the brackets, which I might do. Let's just see how I feel. But this rod here, Okay, this is all one piece, okay, and believe it or not, this is an old curtain rail, right, an old curtain rail, but you can get the brass tube and it's soft. This is just an example I bought, okay, this is a curtain rail, right, that's all it is, and, uh, and you just finger it around, obviously this is a bit harder, but this stuff is nice and thin and pliable, and you just bend it with your fingers. We've got a pipe bending machine, a little one, perfect, but I didn't do it, I did it with my fingers, you know, it hurt thumbs, it hurt after a while, but it does work, and obviously, once you've got this in place, screw this in the cow cowling, and then I, I uh, offered it up into there and got the marked the holes where I needed them. Looking at the picture, because they're actually in the place where the brackets are. It's, this was, you know, they're bolted into the fuse, basically, so nothing will move. This piece here is just a bit of balsa wood that I uh, channeled out with a Dremel and glued together. One piece I cut in half, and then just channeled it out and glued it together you know with epoxy and the reason it's mottled is because on the real plane I noticed that this is black and then it sort of diverts into silver yeah and that, that's basically that you know two the holes and then I put locking nuts on there so nothing will move for the vibration when the plane flies and I think I've possibly covered it all you know that AU one looks better doesn't it <laughs> so my pilots have actually arrived I believe but I wasn't in to collect them so, Sean, thank you very much, you're a star. And, uh, but uh, they had a big surprise. One of the pilots, Sean's not going to say nothing because he knows what the pilot I'm on about. But um, that'll be the last part of the fuse, obviously. Uh, paint them up and put them in. Excuse me. So, um, I think I've covered everything uh, that I can possibly think of. I don't think I've missed nothing. Oh, yeah, the writing here, there is bits of writing, the yeah, numbers, and made by, there's an advertisement saying by De Havilland, but I've wrapped my brains, and I've gone to a station shop, and apparently you can get permanent white marker, and if I get that, I'll write them in, I'll handwrite them in, so that that's the only bit of the fuse that's missing, that I've had. but you know what, it's artistic license, isn't it? I can't do anything if I haven't physically got it. So that's that. So, I told you it was a long video. <laughs> So the next stage now, ladies and gentlemen, is, is I've done all the wing stuff. I'm going to offer the wings up to the fuse and uh, I'll, I'll make sure these all fit in nice, the struts and that. And then I'll spray these up, prime room and spray them up. But that's another video. And that's probably tomorrow's job. All right. So I hope this all helps. Okay. Um, I don't think I've missed anything. I'm really making sure now. But no, I think, I think that's everything. Okay, then. Right then. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Those magnificent men, those magnificent men, those magnificent men in the fly. Those magnificent men, those magnificent men, those magnificent men in the fly.